Every OP patient has some degree of overpronation or oversupination, but 90% of patients have a large amount of overpronation. And so a common question that I get is, do I need orthotics to fix my overpronation or oversupination? And let me start by saying, if you happen to have OP and you don't have orthotics, you're probably one of the lucky few. Almost all my OP patients have already got a set of orthotics. So if they already have orthotics and they have OP, it's a pretty good indication that they're not a magic cure to be able to fix your OP. But a lot of people will ask, well, will they help? Are they an important part of the process? So I want to ask, I want to answer that in this video, and I'd like that answer to be a definitive no. So the human foot is an amazing structure. It has 26 floating bones. So these bones can all shift and move off their own accord. And what it allows the foot to do is to mold into many different shapes. So it can flatten completely on the ground or it can draw itself up into an arch. And depending on the situation, your foot needs to do both things. So there are muscles at the back of your calf and they actually do that action of contracting and drawing up or flattening the arch. So when your foot first hits the ground and you're running, there's a lot of force. You're going from your foot being weightless to your foot slamming into the ground and your body gets heavier as you go faster. So you can weigh as much as eight times your own body weight when you're sprinting. So that first initial foot strike, what your foot will do and what the muscles in the back of your foot called the deep toe flexors will do is they will contract and they will make the arch rigid so that as you hit the foot, it can be nice and stable and it can kind of bear the load of that first brunt of being hit and not completely collapse. Once it's held its position, and that's where it supinates, it will then try and dissipate and soften that load. You wanna think about when something hits a really hard object, hits like a car and they have crumple zones. It's very much a similar phenomenon with the foot. You first have this hard hit and then you have this crumple zone, which they call pronation, where the foot is going to spread and absorb that load. And that's the role of the deep toe flexors. As this foot spreads and stretches, the tendons are gonna stretch and the muscle back here stretches and it acts like a trampoline. It absorbs your body weight to make sure that the pressure and the load doesn't shunt into the knees or shunt into the lower back and cause you an injury. And much like a trampoline, these deep toe flexors, they can absorb the load of you landing and make it safe. And then they can take that energy and bounce you back up. And so the best sprinters in the world are doing this. They're landing on their feet, their heels are barely touching the ground, and they're springing back up as if there are trampolines under their legs. Now, orthotics will correct overpronation, and they can correct oversupination. And what they're gonna do is obviously they're gonna create a structure underneath your foot to hold your foot in a certain shape. But as we just discussed, your foot needs to do two different shapes when it's moving. It needs to go into supination and pronation and you need these foot muscles activating and being active in the process, not being passive. And this is where orthotics can fall down a little bit. If your feet are becoming lazy because they're relying on the orthotic to hold them up, well then they're not gonna be providing their function and their role of absorbing that load. And whilst the orthotic might prevent your foot from dropping in and pronating, and so stopping the knee from dropping in, that load still has to go up somewhere. And that's why so many OP patients already have orthotics. They're avoiding the ankle injuries, they're avoiding the knee injuries because the orthotic is holding them in the correct place. But that load has to go somewhere and there's a really good chance it's going straight to their adductors, which is why they've worn down and they've started to develop OP. To fix OP, you need to fix the six functional systems, which we'll get into in later videos. But more importantly is that you need to fix overpronation, you need those deep toe flexors working in conjunction with those other five functional systems. And that simply isn't gonna happen if you're wearing a pair of orthotics. So in a really roundabout way, your orthotics might be contributing and exacerbating your OP. Now, hopefully that answers the question as to whether or not you should be in investing the money that it takes to get a pair of orthotics. And my clear and definitive answer would be no. You need to be investing your time and energy in strengthening your body to play and do the role that it's designed to do. If you do already have a pair of orthotics though, please don't just take them and throw them out straight away or take them and start running without them. Your body's probably gotten used to them and you're gonna to have to take some time to slowly build up the strength 
to be able to provide the role that the orthotic is providing right now and to do it in a better, um, do a better job of it. Um, so just wean yourself off them, don't just take them out straight away. Um, but obviously as you get stronger through the program, you'll start to feel that you don't need to use them much. But yeah, hopefully that video is helpful. Um, and yeah, keep watching to learn more about your body.